Hello and welcome back to Deus Machina Demon Bane. What a day. And it was an excruciatingly long one at that. It's a miracle I was able to survive. I am going to wrap this incredible day up with a nice, hot bath. Ooh, man. Just one day and I'm like this. If I get caught in a dispute any more than this, I won't last. I need to do... something. Hey! I've come! Ah! Suddenly, and I have no idea why, Ania barges into the bathroom. And she's not even covering herself up, she's completely defenseless. What the hell do you think you're doing? Well, it's a mate duty to help her master get washed up. Oh, come on, you! What are you talking about? Yes, yes, just be quiet and leave it to me. Mm. Excuse me, master. Are you even listening? With soap and washcloth in hand, Hania creeps closer. I try to escape, but there's nowhere to go in this cramped bathroom. I'm cornered instantly. Come on, just turn around, let me scrub you down. Ah, wait, no, ah! And so she got away, and is now scrubbing my back. The feeling of the washcloth on my back, occasionally touching my sides, it really, really ticklish. Hey, cut it out! <laughs> oh, that tickles. <clears throat> Hey, where do you think you're scrubbing? Huh? I figured I'd do the front as well. You don't have to. I'll do it myself. Now, now, don't be shy. Oh, does this feel good? This does feel good. Alright, had to cut a bit out there. Which involved her... using her hands. <clears throat> I think you can guess what I'm referring to there. We'll see if I end up having to uh, cut it again in a second. As soon as she says that, she rubs soap all over her body. Still smiling, she stretches her arms out and closes in on me. Come on! Welcome to paradise! Paradise? That sounds extremely suspicious. Ah! What the hell are you perverts doing in here? Oh, thank god for that. Al's <laughs> flying kick tears the door down, passes over the crouching near, and penetrates my face. Penetration really is the only way to describe it. I mean, the blow doesn't merely break my nose or crack my teeth, but well, it completely pulverizes my jaw and slams my head to the back wall. I leave giant cracks and a huge blood stain on the wall and slump down. Well, that was a depressingly uh, pathetic way for our hero to go, because that doesn't sound survivable the way he's describing that. Oh, I think that was a little rough. Girl, don't think mere ropes can keep me tied down. You won't get away with it as long as I'm here. Know your place, peasant! I'm coughing up blood, I can barely breathe, and the feeble wheezing of my lungs is all that fills my ears. I see. I was a sinner in a past life. I'm sorry. I'm truly sorry. Sorry for being born. Oh please, let me be my next life when I wake. I catch one last glimpse of Isle and Aeneas' battle, and let go. When I come to, I'm staring up at the familiar ceiling, and Aeneas' face. Upon seeing that I've opened my eyes, Aeneas first looks happy, and then grins apologetically. Uh, you okay? I guess I went a little too far, sorry. Huh? My dazed mind has finally grasped the situation. I'm lying on the sofa, and something soft and warm under my head. I'm sleeping on Aeneas' lap. Well, this is pretty awkward. <clears throat> I try to get up, but... Ah! Ah, don't push yourself. You have to lie down for a while. Ugh. I give up and entrust my head to Aeneas' lap. The lights are off, and the darkness emphasizing the quiet of the night. What time is it? Mm, about two in the morning? So I was out of it for quite a while. Where's Al? She went to bed in a huff. Turning my head, I see Al sleeping on Dunsany. <laughs> that Al. All I can do is sigh. Neither I nor Aeneas says a word. It's the only sounds in the apartment are the tickling of the tickling of the clock. The only sounds in the apartment are the ticking of the clock and Al's breathing. Hey, Karu. Hmm? After a while, Hania breaks the silence with a whisper. I look into her eyes. 
They're different than usual. Glowing, really, with a deep, mysterious light. And I'm unable to look away. It's like I've been bewitched. Ania continues quietly. You're a fighter, aren't you? I'm at a loss for words. How does she know? I mean, I haven't said anything about Demon Bane or Al's identity. Y you know? The body's covered with scars. And they're all new scars. We're still fighting. So that's what this is about. I wouldn't have brought it up myself, but I suppose there's no reason to hide it. Well, I guess you could say I'm playing at a hero. Why? Why do you fight? <laughs> let's, let's see. If I don't do what I can, it'll leave a bad aftertaste, I guess. I think about it briefly and respond, and, well, it's the only answer I have. A bad aftertaste? Ania looks confused. Yeah, I suppose that really is a little too ambiguous. It's not like I have any firm convictions or ideals. How should I explain? You know, when some sickening arsehole is causing trouble, doesn't it piss you off? Uh, yeah, I guess. And plus, I'd feel like shit if I didn't help someone in danger. That's the gist of it. I don't get it. No good, huh? Hmm, I'm gonna put it more simply. It's like, look, if there's something I can do to help, I I want to do it. That's human nature, right? <laughs> <laughs> ah, sorry, that's the cynical bastard part of me. The world is far too much of a screwed up place for that to really be human nature. It's like it's. W Humans basically break into three primary categories. Those who genuinely want to do everything they can to help their fellow man. Those who are complete bastards who are only out for themselves. And category three, which is by far the biggest, those who are incredibly apathetic. You know, the kind of people who'll, uh, cl who'll you know, like a post on Facebook and feel like they've done something to change the world. Those are the vast majority of the human race. And, yeah, I... I I'm not going to criticise people for it. I'm just, you know, let's face it, I fall into that category. But, you know, at the end of the day, the world is a pretty screwed up place. And there are not enough of the first category of people, and there are far too many of the second category of people at the end of the day. Still, anyway, <clears throat> that's it. I guess it is. I know I can't save everyone in the world or make everyone happy. I'm not a god or anything. It's way beyond me. Not that... I mean, how can you fight just because of that bad aftertaste thing? No, listen. You're covered in scars, Karoo. You must have been hurt many, many times, right? How can you keep fighting for such a vague reason? Guess it is vague. Why... Why do I fight exactly? At first... Well, it was because I couldn't forgive Master Therian didn't want to allow such evil to exist in the world. That hasn't changed. But is that it? No, I don't think so. That's a big reason, sure, but it's not the only one. So what else is there? As soon as I ask myself this, everything seems to instantly sink into a murky sea of ambiguity. And after racking my brain for a while, I finally come up with an answer. That's just the way we are, isn't it? Uh huh? Humans, that is. In the end, isn't everyone living for such half-assed reasons? Really? If you ask a boxer why he fights, he'll probably just say that he wants to win. If I... Well, if I had to come up with something... Still looking into Aenea's eyes, I smile. Perhaps with a little bit of self-derision. Maybe we do it because it makes us feel good. That's how it is for me, at least. <laughs> I guess I'm just selfish after all. I'm nothing special. An ear falls silent again, obviously deep in thought. I wait, watching her face silently. And at length she speaks, her words slow and deliberate. What if it's all useless? Hmm? Her voice is cold and lonely, like her emotions are frozen over. I can't help but feel that her eyes, like they were the night we first met, are utterly devoid of will. What if you could see the future, and you knew no matter how hard you fight, 
No one can or ever will be saved. That it's all futile. Would you still be able to fight? In the fight against evil, what matters not is the victory. What matters is that the battle is fought. I can't remember who I'm nicking that quote from, and I'm pretty sure I'm misquoting it, but uh, really does sum up the situation. You know, it's, it's effectively a variant on the all that's required for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. <sighs> you know, just because you can't win doesn't mean you shouldn't fight. Not if it's important enough. Hmm. I see. What if all my efforts are worthless, huh? It's a thought that crosses everyone's mind. Not just once, surely, but over and over again for as long as they live. So I respond instead with a question of my own. Okay, let's say that it's all useless. Would you be able to do nothing? Could you just stand sitting by? Mm, I don't think I could. Anir's eyes widen in surprise. She stares hard at my face, her mouth hanging open. This is kind of awkward. The pain stopped, so I get up and leave her with a final word. And besides, everyone's fighting desperately. We don't have the luxury of worrying about that stuff. Anyway, it's late. Let's get to bed, Anir. Leaving the sofa to Anir, Karu goes to sleep on the floor. And Anir sits quietly on the sofa, gazing upon the sleeping Karu. Bad aftertaste. She ruminates over Carew's words. She doesn't really understand them. They have no logic behind them. So perhaps that's only to be expected. However, those words have struck a chord somewhere deep in Aeneas' heart. Running a hand through her messy hair, she suddenly speaks to the darkness. Eavesdropping isn't very nice, is it, Al? You have no right to call me that. It appears that Al was only feigning sleep, and now she sits up, turning to Aeneas. Hostility and distaste are clear in her voice and glare. You... What are you trying to accomplish by getting close to Carew? Nothing, really. Don't play innocent. Tickly! Provoked by Aeneas' curt response, Al leaps down from Dunsany and glares at her furiously, as though she might attack at any moment. I feel the presence of something unholy about you, and I'll not seek to unmask you. But if you mean to do Carew harm, then here and now... Al's hostility sharpens rapidly, becoming pure killing intent, and the air is bursting with tension. But Aeneas immediately responds calmly. That's not why I'm here. Her voice is utterly hollow, and despite all the animosity being directed at her, Aeneas shows no hostility of her own. There isn't even a trace of cunning or malice in her. Though with no target for her will, Al's is at a loss for what to do. Aeneas smiles. Her smile is empty and so terribly calm. I just wanted to meet Carew. That's all, really. Your memory. Just as Al tries to demand information, Aeneas' face breaks into a wide smile, and the face is practically glowing, not with a trace of that earlier emptiness anywhere to be seen. That's enough for tonight. Late nights are bad for your skin. Night! Wait! There's no chance to stop her. It only takes a few seconds for Aeneas to lie down, pull the covers up, and fall asleep. <laughs> Al is left alone with her astonishment, and she stares at the sleeping girl, frowning deeply. The sounds in the silence are the breathing of Carew and Aeneas. What is this girl? I don't understand. Tickly! You know what, I think that's an excellent point to end this part, so... Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next.